My friends, it's so good to see you back here at Obsolete. I wish I could say I had something really exciting for you, but you know, I got this project that I'm working on, and honestly, I can't imagine anyone but me getting into it. But hey, that's okay. They say you should make videos for yourself, and this is what I wanted to make a video about. So let's give it a shot. I'm going to toss it out there into the world, and if anyone notices, great. Here we go. In a previous video, I talked about Tamagotchis. They're a small keychain electronic toy made in the late 90s by Bandai. And that got me thinking about Bandai Digimons, which are a lot like Tamagotchis. They work the same way. They eventually eclipsed the Tamagotchi in popularity and became a much bigger franchise, rivaling Pokemon even. It has some of the same functionality, basically you take care of the virtual pet and then when it's mature enough, you can fight it with your friend's Digimon by way of these pogo pins on the top of the device, which is pretty cool. So it's a video game, right? The outcome of the game is determined by how well you take care of your virtual pet, which requires constant supervision if you're going to get the best character, if you're going to unlock the top of the growth chart. Then I saw this article on Hackaday about a talk that Sprite TM did. And what they did is they used emulated Tamagotchis based on a dumped ROM that Natalie Silvanovich provided. So he emulated a Tamagotchi and then hooked a bunch of them together to sort of provide them with a matrix, a, a fake world. It's pretty cool. And while this is great for some of the newer Tamagotchis, it doesn't work with older ones like the original or this Digimon. So my solution, not being able to emulate it, was to take a Digimon and insert it into this electronic control mechanism that takes care of it and eventually, hopefully, monitors it so I can go about my day and come home and the Digimon will be at the level that I want it to be and maybe I can start experimenting with fighting. So what do you do? Well, you take your Digimon, you open it up, and on the back, there's these test pads that's used for a bed of nails in circuit test. You can solder wires to these test pads and then connect them to a breadboard. It's just sort of the easiest way to get around it. Uh, I could construct a bed of nails on my own, I guess, but it really makes more sense to just bang it all together. And the nice thing about these test pads is if I want to, I can restore this Digimon to stock operation without damaging any of the traces or soldering things directly to the button pads. The test pads on the back are nice and convenient for this purpose. So what hardware did I need for this? Well, first I needed a microcontroller. I started with an Arduino, and anybody who's used an Arduino knows they're really great, they're cheap, they're accessible, and uh, you can bang out a prototype really quickly. And that's what I did with mine. But I ended up getting a pocket chip. A pocket chip is like a handheld chip single board computer. It's got a keyboard and display built in, and a battery, which proved very helpful because it means now my whole apparatus is mobile. And then using Python, I rewrote my Arduino program. And if you've never used Python like I hadn't, please do yourself a favor and try it. Python's amazing. There's even a live programming environment where you can type values into it and get immediate results to test ideas. It's great. It's really handy for in situ programming because I don't have to work on my program and then upload it like I would an Arduino and wait for everything to reset. I can just kill the script in progress, rewrite it, and then reactivate it, and I can immediately see what effect my changes have had. So the next problem I ran into was time. It took too long for me to raise a Digimon from infant to fighting age, so one of the ways I fixed this was I removed the crystal oscillator off the back of the Digimon, and I replaced it with this. It's a variable oscillator I got off eBay. The Digimon uses a crystal oscillator for its real-time clock, and it's a 32 kilohertz oscillator. What this does is allows me to feed it a 32 kilohertz oscillation, and then at the flip of the switch, multiply that by 10 and get 320 kilohertz, which means I can essentially reach a full growth cycle in about a day. So the program I wrote to govern the Digimon is pretty simple. It's got four functions, feed a meal, feed a pill, play a game, clean up after it. 
and each function has an interval associated with it to make sure that I'm not overfeeding it or underfeeding it. But I have to sort of play with those still. It's still not perfect. Right now, it's just flying blind. If it somehow gets into the clock screen, it tries to give the right amount of button presses so that eventually it will get me back to the main screen. <laughs> But mostly this project was just an excuse to play around with Python, and I gotta say, I'm hooked. I even messed around with Pygame and uh, came up with this graphical interface. <laughs> yeah, that, that needs a bit of work. But hey, that's the project, really. Not much more to do, just some features I want to integrate and polish, and maybe I can work it into an enclosure, let it run indefinitely on its own, see how long I can keep a Digimon alive. It all starts to feel a little bit super villainy, I guess. I hope you liked checking this out. Let me know if you think I missed something cool. Drop me a line, give me a shout, or don't, you know, whatever. I'll just be here growing my Digimons. So long.